In January 1943, the first group of enlisted women to serve overseas arrived at Algiers. There, amid the bombed ruins, they lived where they could. Sometimes it was in convents, sharing them with orphans. There were hardships. Water was rationed and had to go a long way. But wash day came around just the same. More and more wax went overseas. To the skirl of bagpipes, they landed in Scotland and then trained for their camps. In India, they worked within sight of the Taj Mahal and visited Indian shrines in native style. In New Delhi, they went sightseeing in a native buggy. More wax arrived in Naples, Italy. And in Cairo, they took two camels for transportation. Women were on duty in all parts of the world. They landed at Anzio and moved on to the battlefields of Europe. From all walks of life they came, society women, teachers, secretaries, housewives. They put aside the comforts of home for a soldier's life and a pup tent in a French field. They traded in their silks and satins for a pair of dirty fatigues and a shower once a week if they were lucky. The local beauty shop was their steel helmets. And it doubled as a laundromat. When chow time came, it was can opening time and a K-ration diet replaced the luxuries of civilian life. At night, they crawled into their pup tents and their beauty sleep got used to the bumps. But the women made the best of it and stood up to the test of marches over mountains and service in the air, in the noise of battle. Or the quiet of a hospital. They were there, getting the job done, forging the peace which finally came. They came home. They had served shoulder to shoulder with our men and had earned their rightful place beside them. But some of them never came back. And there were some who could not walk away. Wax got the Purple Heart for sacrifice, the Legion of Merit for outstanding service above and beyond the call of duty. The Women's Army Corps had done its job. But that wasn't the end. There came a new beginning. 